Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new episode of the NASCAR Heat 5 Career Mode. I hope you're all having a great day today. We start things off before we get into the playoff racing here at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. You guys have been wondering what paint scheme will Kyle Larson be driving in the career mode in the 5 car next season. Well, there it is right there. The HendrickCars.com number 5 Chevrolet with Exalta being on the car as well as well as the C. Kelly uh, Blue Book on there. This game, of course, was made by my good friend Renato, and if Larson picks up some more sponsorship throughout the rest of next season, you may see some other paint schemes with main sponsors on his car. Now, as we could, though, come through and to the first race of the weekend here at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. All three series here this weekend now, as we had subscriber Crazy Player 198 in the truck for this episode here in uh, our custom team now as we have been having a great playoff run so far and what I've uh, mentioned is our rookie playoff run here as a team owner so I was excited to get this one underway Las Vegas uh, track that I've kind of struggled at in the past personally now we're going to see how crazy player is able to do as he gets underway going down toward turn one now Haley Deegan was actually up at the front of the pack and as you guys know she picked up her first truck series win here in the career mode recently when we got going for the playoffs and now she finds herself running up front again here in Las Vegas. She will be moving up into the Xfinity Series next season in the career mode in that number 98 car. Instead of Riley Herbst in real life, it will be Haley Deegan in that 98 car for Stuart Haas Racing there. As you saw, Sheldon Creed would get up the inside of Crazy Player down the front straight away. So turns 3 and 4 was an extreme weak point for this truck, but turns 1 and 2 was the complete opposite an extreme just strength point here as he came through now a little bit later though he was actually coming through turns one and two and you'd be able to clear uh tanner gray i think his name is now as he came through out of a turn two but you can see the pack up ahead was just a little bit too out of reach and it kind of stayed that way for the rest of the race here in las vegas so crazy player running uh, up inside the top 10 as he came through turns three and four and Haley deegan was still battling it out for the lead right now with johnny Sauter as she uh, went down this front straightaway so unfortunately, Crazy Player 198 wouldn't quite be able to get to that pack up in front of him as we came through to the final lap here in the world of Westgate at uh, Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Now as Haley Deegan would be able to get to the lead on the final lap here in Vegas through turns three and four for the final time and for the second time this season in her rookie season of the truck series, Haley Deegan will come through to win in Las Vegas and keep her chances of winning a championship alive as this locks her now in to the final four here in the playoffs. So Haley Deegan and we'll have a chance to win a championship at Phoenix Raceway in another handful of episodes now as you see the rest of the finishing order on your screen. So that could really be history made, of course, with Deegan winning a Truck Series championship now as you see Mike Harmon down there in the last position now. So very excited to see how this plays out. And as you see, Haley Deegan has advanced. Our team is seven points below the cut line right now in the Xfinity Series race. I just simmed through that. Uh, here is the finishing order, though, on your screen. Austin Sendrick picked up the victory, so he he advances into the next round. Our star car, driven again by Ty Gibbs, actually, finished in the 12th position. And then you see uh, the rest of the order. Zane Smith had his subpar finish. Alfredo down there in P31 now. We'll show the uh, playoff standings after that race. As you see, we are three points below the cut line with the star car, unfortunately, as Austin Sendrick is the only one to advance. And Todd Gilliland well above the cut line along with Zane Smith. But we come through now into the Cup Series weekend for myself, where we come through into qualifying here as we went down towards turn one. Uh, the goal was to hit a 30.954. I was confident that uh, based off of previous races here at Las Vegas uh, that we could get right around that goal now and hopefully get towards the top 10. So we come through turns 3 and 4 just running that bottom. I really like to run the top in turn 1 and 2 at Las Vegas but definitely uh, not in qualifying now as we come through down the front straight away. It is going to be close to the goal. It is a 30.934 and we qualify P10 here for the South Point 400 at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. So a relatively solid qualifying effort setting us up well for this first race of the second round of the playoffs. Kevin Harvick and Eric Jones on the front row. Jones continues the strong playoff run that he's been having now is Eric Almarola. He's down there in P20. He just most recently got eliminated from the playoffs. Alex Bowman down in P23, a playoff driver. And then in 40th, we got Quinn Health there as we get ready to take the green flag here at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Only 12 drivers remain in the playoffs, and we are currently still seated at number one, 29 points above the cut line. The four drivers out are Kevin Harvick, Matt DiBenedetto, Eric Jones, as well as Alex Bowman. So two Hendrick drivers on the outside looking in. Harvick out by one, DiBenedetto seven, Eric Jones nine, and Alex Bowman 12. Eric Jones is really in the most unfortunate position. He's had a great season, just hasn't had the playoff points to really show for how strong he has been. So only one Hendrick car right now in the uh, top 10 in points, or I should say top eight there to make it into the next round, and that is Chase Elliott. 
right now as Denny Hamlin looks like he might be struggling a little bit this weekend uh, there as Quinn Helve looks a bit slow as usual now as Kevin Harvick is on pole alongside Eric Jones. Here's we get ready to go green in the South Point uh, 400 at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Great first round of the playoffs guys. Let's go have a good second one. We heard a little bit of encouragement now as we get ready to go green as Kevin Harvick and Eric Jones lead the way to the first race of the round of 12 here as we are underway for the South Point 400 at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Joey Logano, our rival up there in P3 here as we got Martin Truex Jr., our teammate just in front of us now as they're already trying to go three wide it looks like as we're right behind that nine of Chase Elliott and so far the playoffs this season have been dominated by our Joe Gibbs Racing team. Denny Hamlin most recently won uh, last episode. Kyle Busch won at Richmond and then we had Martin Truex Jr. win at Darlington, so no one has been able to beat Joe Gibbs Racing here in the playoffs so far, and unfortunately, we're the only JGR driver that hasn't won in the playoffs yet. Now, as we look to continue that here today, though, as we come through to cross the line, completing this first and opening lap now with 18 laps remaining in stage one. Ryan Blaney right in front of us. He got eliminated last round in the playoffs. He had a lot of bad luck that put him in a bad position going into the eliminator race last episode out in Bristol, and unfortunately, he was not able to make up the uh, points that he had lost, and he was eliminated along along with another driver like Eric Almarola and Chase Briscoe, as well as Christopher Bell here as we come through turns three and four. William Byron up the inside. Now as we exit turn four, Byron, as you guys know, going to the number 88 car for the uh, Dale Jr. and Jimmy Johnson collaboration team next season in the career mode. Very excited to see what uh, Earnhardt Johnson Racing can do as they will be an affiliate to the team we'll be on of Hendrick Motorsports. So they'll definitely be a strong team and they'll be driving, like I said, that number that you see right in front of us, as you guys know, on the Hendrick side of things, the 88 will be rebranded to the number five for Kyle Larson. So we would get to work, though, on passing Eric Jones, who came through out of turn two, now on lap six of 19 in stage one. I would dive to the inside of him through, uh, or going down into turn three, and we would be able to complete the pass on him as he started second, but he's quite quickly drifting down the order, so maybe not a lot of speed in that 88 car, so he might be struggling a little bit here today. Usually, Eric qualifies decently and runs really good, but now all of a sudden, when he qualifies good, he's actually falling down the order, uh, so something to keep in mind there. But then we would run down our rival of Joey Logano. He's He's not been very happy with us recently, but fortunately, we've only had one race with him being a rival. That was last episode, and we got around him no problems, but we would run him down at a turn two on lap eight, and immediately you see him trying to squeeze me up towards the wall, so I just pull out. I said, you know what? You can hold on to the position for now. It's only lap eight of this race here as we're going to turn three, so I just had to really time the move that I made on him perfectly now so we wouldn't have to deal with him trying to wreck us, so we're right on the back of him here as we come through down the front straightaway, 11 to go in the stage. I look to the right-hand side there as we go down into turn one. We're close enough to where we can probably clear him through turns one and two, so I go around the outside of Logano through the center of the corner, and sure enough, on the exit of turn two, we clear Logano, so we really did not have to deal with him too much here, and hopefully that was the last time we'll even have to deal with Joey Logano for the rest of this race now, as I expect him to be eliminated at the end of this round now as we come through out of turn four. Logano, of course, could prove me wrong. He could go all the way to the final four and just make it uh, terrible for us now as we come through, though, now past the halfway point in stage one. Martin Truex Junior, our teammate out in front now as we have a bunch of smoke pouring out of the one car of Kurt Busch as he's going to go crashing into the outside ball into turn three. The playoff contender in his final season has blown a right front tire, it appears, or a rear tire and has crashed into turn three and usually that leads to a DNF, but surprisingly and fortunately for Kurt, that would not be the end of his races. He sees though some mixed strategy on the pit lane. I decided to do what the other playoff drivers really were doing and I came into the pit lane, but Kurt Busch crashes into turn three, but fortunately for him, he still remains in this race. Some playoff implications here in the first stage now as Kurt's chances at stage points have been completely destroyed and you guys know how important stage points are here in the career mode and just in NASCAR in general now as we are underway though with five laps to go in stage one. Joey Logano was a playoff contender that actually stayed up there so he is going to just drop like a rock here and the final handful of laps of this first stage as he is on older tires as we're right on the back of the nine of Chase Elliott. Uh, Kevin Harvick, he's another playoff driver that actually stayed out as well here as we go down to towards turn three. A bit of a surprising call from the 2014 Cup Series champion, but we're making these uh, old uh, tires that are in front of us come into our advantage because they're in the way of everybody there. As you see Elliott getting a little bit aggressive, I am actually going to risk it a little bit, go to the outside of the 22 of Logano in a three wide move here as he has a whole bunch of damage now. Fortunately, he did not actually try to force me into the wall there. He did make a little bit of contact with me as we were very briefly four wide there as Ross Chastain is moving his way through the field as well. So we passed the 41 of Cole Custer and now 
now we will get to the back of Kevin Harvick, but Chase Elliott at this point now out in front with Chastain continuing to follow me past Kevin Harvick. Ross Chastain starting to seem to maybe be putting some races together here. He's had a lot of speed throughout the season, but just hasn't really had the luck or anything at all go his way now. But uh, once the playoffs got underway, Chastain seems to be looking a little bit stronger now as we go down into turn three. Elliott pretty much driving away with the stage victory at this point. Now it's a 42 of Chastain actually goes spinning through turn three and for a huge hit to the outside wall. And he actually goes up into the air over, I think that might have been Eric Jones in the 88 that ran into him. And the caution comes out a lap early to end stage one. And just as I was mentioning, Ross Chastain having a pretty solid race. He has a huge crash, and he will actually be out of this race, so I guess I should just not uh, talk about Ross Chastain running good anymore, because that was uh, a huge incident for him now, as he would come into the pit lane again, though, for two cans of fuel, as well as four tires, so a bit of an exciting start to this first stage here, as we get ready to go green for the second stage now, as we will come into the pit lane P2, and we actually overtake Chase Elliott to take the lead here for the start of stage two. That was a huge crash from the 42, guys. I saw him launch into the air. There you heard myself, just a reaction to the 42 of Chastain's crash now as we are underway for stage two here. Chase Elliott on the front row along with myself. Elliott picking up a playoff point right there. That could be very crucial going uh, into the next round of the playoffs if he can make it now as every point matters as far or further and further that we dive into the playoffs. Now as we come through at the center of one and two, clear of Elliott already. Chase Elliott had some problems in the last round of the playoffs. There was one race in particular where he had an issue where he DNF'd or crashed or something like that now and that really put him in a bad spot, but he was still able to advance into this round of the playoffs. But at this point, you really cannot afford to have any issues now as we come through down at the front, straight away leading this first lap of the second stage. Now, they're already going about three wide behind us now as now Kozlowski's going to dive up the inside. I know I don't have the fastest car here tonight in Las Vegas. Now, as you see me all the way up by the wall through turn one and two and just trying to use that momentum because you can really make that outside work here in turns one and two. But down the front straight away coming to lap three now, Kozlowski gets up alongside me just showing the true pace he has in that number two car now as Kevin Harvick's up in the mix behind us three wide between him Elliott as well as Martin Truex Jr. now as we exit turn two still side by side with Kozlowski and that would continue through turns three and four as I'm right on that right rear quarter panel trying to hold him back and get back to the lead but Truex pounces on it now gets to my outside makes it three wide for the lead as Eric Almarola all of a sudden finds himself in the picture as well as we go down into turn one and all of a sudden we go from battling for the lead to hanging on to like fifth place in a matter of seconds now as I nearly get into the outside wall I really had to get out of the throttle there and now we actually give up another spot to Kyle Busch as we're three wide with him as well as Ryan Newman in his final season of the career mode unfortunately for him he did miss the playoffs here in the career mode in his final season as we come through turns three and for Newman all of a sudden moves up into fourth place as Chase Elliott he's stuck behind me he's kind of falling back as well Kyle Larson moves through now as well he's going to get up into the top five as we uh, now pass Kevin Harvick into turn one as it's just getting some wild here here, and we're only five laps in to this second stage now is Harrison Burton and the 96 having a solid run here and that number 96 car as well as he's uh, throughout his rookie season pretty much just bearing through and just hoping to get a better ride next season in the career mode and I can confirm Harrison Burton will be in a different car next season in the career mode now as we come through out of turn two now Chase Elliott he was starting to get onto the move he would pass me then he would pass Newman he would pass Kozlowski get all the way up now into fifth place as we come through now to, uh, to put the fight to the inside of the six of Newman is Eric Almarola was now out front leading this thing so he definitely has a lot of speed he was actually pulling away from Martin Truex Jr. now as we come through clearing Newman now through turns one and two on the exit of the corner there on now lap 10. We would then run down the uh, two car of Brad Keselowski, or at least try to run down uh, the two car of Keselowski, but then the caution actually comes out again here in stage two. I could not actually find uh, the replays uh, for what caused this one now. As you see, though, Ross Chastain, of course, DNF'd earlier. He is uh, multiple laps down, but you see some drivers coming into the pit lane, but once again, I decided to base it off of uh, what most of the playoff drivers were doing, and that was uh, coming into the pit lane. So we come in for two cans of fuel, as well as four tires, and get ready to go green here now, as we'll be right behind the 18 of Kyle Busch as we would all drop down to about P20 due to the cars that stayed out now. So we are underway with just five laps to go in this second stage here as it's going to get very hectic now. We all 
always uh, know how it is when a whole bunch of slower cars stay out. It gets a very action-packed three to four wide racing at times here as we come through out of turn two. Immediately, I go up to the far outside to make a three wide with Kyle Busch as well as Chase Elliott there on the far inside. Truebrook just in front of us. Harrison Burton just behind myself as we go down into turn three. There you see Quinn Half right in the way of Chase Elliott. Now is Almirola in front of us stuck behind the 12 of Blaney. Almirola very well might have the fastest car here today looking for a second win on the season fresh off of getting eliminated from the playoffs but Brad Kozlowski finds himself leading and honestly I think Kozlowski is in a great position here to potentially win the stage now as I just can't go anywhere as I now get to the right hand side of Almirola who is actually stuck behind McDowell not uh, the 12 of Blaney but there were four wide right behind us there for a moment now as we're up into P15 behind McDowell in that 34 and we just kind of continue here on the outside just making up a ton of track position very quickly as Elliott gets caught up once again on that bottom lane as we approach just three laps to go in the second stage three wide in the middle between the 13 and the 17 and now as we go down towards turns one up the inside of Stenhouse we will clear him and we just kind of continue on this move going forwards now as we would easily get to the inside of the 38 of John Hunter Nemechek whose future right now in the cup series in the career mode at least is very uncertain he could maybe go down to the truck series like he did in real life I could do that uh, let me guys know actually in the comment section if you'd like me to maybe put him on Kyle Busch Motorsports in the truck series in the career mode next season but now we are up inside the top 10 just making a very or a ton of progress I should say here as we came through the two laps to go out of turn two and now we're going to pass the three of Austin Dillon get right to the back of the 23 of Bubba Wallace now uh, and we would go into turn three up the inside of him and we would pass him as well as we came through to the final lap now of stage two I had absolutely no chance of running down the cars in front of us as it was actually Ryan Newman who was leading through turn three and four Keselowski sent it up his inside out of turn four but it wasn't going to be enough as actually hit the outside wall over there on the exit of turn four damaging the right side of the car but Ryan Newman wins stage two and we come through to get P4 after knocking the right side of the car off there uh, when there was absolutely no need to do that sorry about that that was all on me I was just pushing too hard for no reason there you heard myself there on the radio pushing too hard for no reason at all. We had no pressure from behind and I just knocked the wall down anyways. But uh, we only did minor damage to the car, so only one second or so now as we will, will be coming into the pit lane once again for two cans of feel as well as four fresh tires. But Ryan Newman manages to pick up the second stage victory which could very well be the final stage victory of his cup series career here in the career mode now as we will get ready to go green from the fourth position christopher bell actually overtook keselowski on the pit lane so myself and keselowski now on row number two as newman and christopher bell lead the way to the green flag for the start of the third and final stage now christopher bell just most recently eliminated from the playoffs my car does not go very well on the restart i actually pulled out a line because i thought it was just not going to take off at all but then all of a sudden it seemed to get going uh, so I pull back down and actually cross over the 23 of Bubba Wallace for some reason he moved up in front of me so I said you know what I'm just gonna pull down under him and now we move back up into fourth place of the inside now of the 95 of Christopher Bell as we go down the back straight away I can confirm the 95 team will be back for one more season at least in the career mode now as I decided to not get rid of that team going into next season as we come through out of turn four now uh, there you see Kozlowski and Newman battling it out side by side for the lead just like they were battling it out for the stage two victory just a few moments ago with 24 laps to go now here in the South Point Casino 400 at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Immediately I jump up to the outside when I get the opportunity through turn one as well as two as we go down this back stretch. Keselowski clears Newman for the second position as we close in on the back of him into turn three. He goes high. I decide okay I'm going to go low now uh, and try to make this pass as quickly as possible on Ryan Newman. The 2008 Daytona 500 champion as we exit turn four he was able to stay in front of us and Chase Elliott. He would come out of nowhere run all three of us down and he would blow right by me going into turn one as I had all of a sudden no chance of fighting Chase Elliott here as you can see how much speed he has he clears me through the center of turn one and two and he moves up now into p3 and immediately gets to the inside of Ryan Newman down the back straight away into turn three so Elliott on the move here into the corner as we're just going to try and follow him here on lap 47 approaching just 20 laps to go but you can see I just kind of get tight there on the exit of the corner can't make the move now as he's also going to look to the inside of Brad Keselowski and Chase Elliott Elliott will go to the front of the pack here in the first race of the second round of the playoffs as he looks to win his way in to the round of eight by getting his third victory of the season.
So Elliot has had a very strong season so far and he's now bringing that into Las Vegas as we came through to lap 50. He had driven away from the uh, second place car of Keselowski as well as Ryan Newman and myself of course. We had no pressure from behind so we're just kind of trying to all hang with each other as Elliot just drives away but as we go into turn 3 Chase Elliot blows the right front tire and into the outside while he goes huge playoff implications as Elliot running away with the victory blows the tire slams the outside wall and very fortunate or luckily for him him. This was not the end of his race, but more playoff implications as Elliott's chances of winning are taken away now as he will have to go quite a ways down the field as we are deciding to come into the pit lane to put uh, one can of fuel in the car as well as right side tires. I was very lucky to actually not run into the back of any of those cars there as I was very afraid that was going to happen, uh, but fortunately it did not now as you see the order on your screen. So Kurt Busch, uh, Gregson by the way, DNF'd under that one of those most recent cautions now. Uh, I think that was in stage two, but we gained two positions on the pit lane so we'll now be p2 but kurt bush as well as chase elliott are the two playoff drivers that have huge implications here today now as we are underway now as we get going for lap 55 13 laps to go and we actually get a pretty good launch compared to keselowski who did make contact with elliott under that caution so that maybe could have been a factor right now as ryan newman still up here in p3 eric Almarola, he finds himself back up in the mix we saw the speed he had earlier i think if it was really uh down to Almarola and elliott they were probably the fastest cars here today in las vegas so Almarola might be in a good position here to maybe come in and steal the victory here as we come through the center of three and four. Keselowski goes high. I go middle. Newman goes bottom as we exit turn four. Almarola to my inside. So we now drop down to P4. He's really showing the speed in that number 10 car now with 12 laps to go here in st the third and final stage now is Kyle Larson. Christopher Bell just behind myself. Larson, he's just been kind of running quietly inside the top 10 throughout this whole race and now he finds himself passing me nearly for the fourth position as I just did not have a whole lot of speed to fight with Larson and he would drive his way up into second place to the inside of Ryan Newman now as we also lost a position to uh, our teammate of Martin Truex Jr. and now Kyle Larson tries to take over the lead from Ryan Newman and he will do just that as a three wide in front of us there for a moment between Truex Keselowski as well as Eric Almarola now as we go down towards turns at one as we got some great racing all race long and it continues here under the final laps of this race now as Martin Truex Jr. though he would get to the inside of Kyle Larson on lap 58 and now with nine Nine laps to go. Martin Truex Jr., our teammate, would move through to take the lead from Kyle Larson into turn one. Now, as I'm just doing everything I can to stick with the pack, Joe Gibbs Racing has won every race so far of the playoffs this season, and now Truex tries to continue that here by uh, winning the fourth race of the playoffs. Now, as we would dive up, though, the inside of Almarola decided that the outside just wasn't going to work with all these guys running it, and immediately we're able to get alongside the 10 of Almarola as we go down into turn three. Larson, Newman, Almarola all on the top. Truex Truex Keselowski, myself on the bottom. Now as a caution, comes out again here with eight laps to go in Las Vegas. And this is going to force probably a four-lap dash for the victory or so now as we get ready to go green. No pit stop necessary here as we get ready for what will be likely the final restart. Martin Truex Jr. and Kyle Larson on the front row. Larson, a future teammate of ours. Truex is going to be a future ex-teammate of ours now as we are underway here with four laps to go in Las Vegas. Kurt Busch has found himself up here on the mix in P7 behind us. He spent the whole race trying to make up the time that he had lost due to that blown tire earlier here as we go down into turn one. Unfortunately, no opportunity for myself to get down to the bottom, so we just kind of have to stay put right here uh, behind the six of Ryan Newman as Al Morola. He's trying to get up in the mix. We know how fast he is, but Truex clear down the back straight away into turn three as we clear Kurt Busch into turn three, so I'm able to get down to the inside on that left-hand side of Newman, and hopefully we can really just get lucky here and maybe make some moves now as we go down this front stretch. It'll be three laps to go at the line as Truex he's all the way up at the top, Keselowski at the bottom, and if Truex stays up at the top, this is a huge opportunity for a driver like Brad Keselowski here as we come through the center of turn one and two. Newman still on my right red quarter panel as I get up the inside there very, very sneakily of the inside of the 10 of Eric Almarola. I don't really think he anticipated that and I just saw that hole open up and I decided, you know what, I gotta try and get in there and we made it happen. I clipped the apron into turn three though and slide up the track now as we exit turn four. Newman back to my outside as we come through to two laps to go here in Las Vegas. Trubex, Keselowski, Larson, P1 through third. Now as we go down into turn one side by side with Newman. Almarola looks to my inside three wide through the center of turns one and two. Kyle Busch into the mix now as well. We clear Ryan Newman. Larson to the inside of Keselowski down the back straight away. A lap and a half to go here in Las Vegas as we will duel it out with Eric Almarola as he is no, has no chance of winning at this point. Now as Larson 
clears Keselowski as now if Truex just runs the bottom here, he will be able to win this race. As we briefly, just ever so slightly, got into the wall as we come through to start the final lap here in Las Vegas. Martin Truex Jr. holding on to that lead is going down into turn one. Larson into second would love to get a victory for the first time in multiple seasons now as we come through out of turn two. Down the back straightaway for the final time. Can we get a run on Kyle Busch? Yes, we do. We need every point possible because you never know what's going to happen at Talladega and the Charlotte Roval. So we go through turn three of the inside of Kyle Truex to the top, Larson to the bottom, but it's not enough. Martin Truex Jr. will come through to get his second win of the playoffs now as Kyle Busch barely holds us off there for the fifth position and we come home to finish in P6 here in Las Vegas. And that, that win by Martin Truex Jr. continues the Joe Gibbs Racing dominance of this playoff where Joe Gibbs Racing has still won all four races so far of the playoffs here this season. So uh, incredible dominance. Hopefully we can actually get ourselves a win here very shortly. In the next episode, it'll be Talladega, so it'll be interesting to see. Is Logano, DiBenedetto, Alex Bowman, Eric Jones are your four drivers on the outside looking in. Very unfortunate for Jones there. Uh, Joey Logano, the closest, three points below that cut line. Chase Elliott. He is 19 points above the cut line, even after the problems he had, and Kurt obviously had some problems too. Uh, but we are very comfortable above that cut line going into Talladega, so that's always nice to have. And obviously, those wins we picked up earlier this season have really made a difference now. As we have four wins on the season, but uh, we haven't won any in the playoffs, and uh, we haven't won actually since what Chicago land. So uh, it's been a little bit now actually since we picked up the win, as we had a very strong start to the regular season. But as always, if you guys enjoyed this episode, you do know what to do there as you see the uh, Cup Series playoff grid one more time before we end this episode. Uh, DiBenedetto, Bowman, and Jones all have quite a bit of work to do. Logano's still in a relatively solid position. Preferably he doesn't make it into the next round being a rival of ours. But in the next one, we go to Talladega Super Speedway for both the Truck Series as well as Cup Series. No Xfinity race, but before we end it, I just want to say thank you to the Go On Racing members of MJ, Aiden, Eric, Dylan, Joseph9001, RJ, as well as Timothy. So thank you all for taking the time out of your day to watch this episode, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a great day, everybody.